And today we will talk about electromagnetic units, the Georgi system, which should be of great interest to the Italy chapter, and the revised international system of units. First, uh, motivation for the revision of the international system of units, then a history of three systems, CGS, MKS, and the modern international system, SI. And then at the end, my predictions about why the CGS system will become obsolete. The main points are that the revised SI came into effect uh, in 2019 on World Metrology Day. It is the most significant change in units of measure since 1954. Now all units are defined in terms of fixed constants. And what's interesting for magnetics is that the permeability of vacuum, mu zero, is no longer exactly 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 Henry's per meter. Mu zero has become a measurable constant. And this recalls the original Georgi MKS system presented for the first time in 1901. The constitutive relationships between B and H and M, that does not change, but the conversion from the EMU system to the SI system is no longer equivalent, and the quantities are no longer exactly uh, translatable. So first, the motivation for the revision of the international system. A lot of it has to do with the problem of the kilogram. What's the problem of the kilogram? There has been a drift in the values of mass of the of the kilogram artifacts that are in all of the National Metrology Institutes. As you may know, the original international prototype of the kilogram here is in a, near, near Paris. And this had defined, this was the definition of the kilogram. But there were many replicates of the kilogram distributed throughout the world. And every few years, these replicates were compared to the international prototype of the kilogram. And the deviations in mass were measured. Naturally, since this international prototype defines the kilogram, its mass change has been zero constantly because this was the kilogram. So the only way to know about variations is by comparing to the different artifacts that were replicate copies. And these changed on average about 50 micrograms over 100 years. Well, if you work at a National Metrology Institute, this is intolerable. Now, the modern kilogram, the new kilogram is defined by Planck's constant. It is, it is not referable to an artifact standard. And how is that done? Well, the second in the meter, and now the new fixed value of the Planck constant define the kilogram. What about the second? The second had already been defined based on a hyperfine splitting frequency of cesium, that defined the second. If you know the second and you know the fixed value of the speed of light, which was already defined, that defines the meter. This is a velocity, this is time, now you know the meter. Well, the units of the Planck constant is, in terms of kilograms, meters and seconds. If you know meters and seconds, then you know the kilogram. So when you fix the uh, unit, then that has the effect of um, defining the kilogram. And that's the way the kilogram since 2019 has been defined. What about the ampere? Because now we're getting close to magnetism. Under the old SI system, it was termed, uh, was defined in terms of Ampere's force law. 
and that specified a force per unit length of two current carrying wires, each one exactly one ampere, and separated by a distance of one meter. Very awkward indeed, and in fact, nobody measured the ampere this way. Instead, they used the, the um, quantum Hall effect for resistance and the Josephson effect for voltage and Ohm's law. And with that, they, they in practice define the ampere. But officially, this was the definition of the ampere. So what happens when you define the ampere this way, then you have defined the permeability of the vacuum and it is exactly four pi times 10 to the negative seven newtons per ampere squared, which converts exactly to M, uh, Henry's per meter. Now, the new definition of the ampere is based on the fixed electron charge or the fundamental charge, E, instead of the fixed permeability of vacuum mu sub zero. And the definition is this, one ampere is the electric current corresponding to a flow of so many elementary charges per second. Well, that means that mu zero has now become a measurable constant. And the experimental value of mu zero is now based on the dimensionless fine structure constant alpha. And here's the equation in terms of the fixed Planck's constant, fixed speed of light, fixed electron charge, and the measurable fine structure constant. Well, naturally, the people who are in charge of these things do things very well. So the value of mu zero is very close to four pi times 10 to the negative seven. It is, it is identical to nine significant figures, much more precise than anything we can measure in the laboratory. You can see from the two equations at the top, there are certain constants that were experimental and certain constants that were fixed. And with the revision of the SI, now mu zero has become experimental. The uncertainty in mu zero is the same as the uncertainty in alpha. And what about the permittivity of vacuum? Well, the permittivity of vacuum is related to, to the um, speed of light together with the permeability of vacuum, though that exact relationship has not changed. Well, this seems like a big insult to magnetism that they changed our constant. They could have done something else. They could have fixed something called the Planck charge. And if they had fixed the Planck charge, that would have kept mu zero exactly equal to four pi times 10 to the negative seven. But what would happen? It would have made the electron charge dependent of, on measurements of the fine structure constant. Ge and generally people agreed that would not have been a good idea because by fixing the value of the electron charge, you now bring the practical quantum electrical standards into exact agreement with the SI system. So who is they? Who makes the rules? And there are a lot of initials that represent the names of these committees in French, but the two important ones that I want you to remember is CIPM, the International Committee for Weights and Measures, and CCEM, the Consultative Committee for Electricity and Magnetism. And before I can go further, I have to explain to you an expression from America, and that is being thrown under the bus. It means you are sacrificing something or sacrificing someone. And here you can see this round boy is being thrown under the bus. He's being sacrificed. So who, who is being thrown under the bus? It is mu zero. And who is doing it? CCEM and CIPM. And here is the electron charge, very happy because she is not being thrown under the bus. 
This is the revised SI. You can see there are four newly defined constants. Newly defined constants, the Planck constant, the elementary charge, the Boltzmann constant, and the Avogadro constant. Formerly, before 2019, these were measurable constants measurable constants, but when they made the revised SI where these became fixed constants, they made the transition seamless because they used the best experimental values at the time of the conversion to define and fix the values of these new constants. You can download the official book of the International System of Units from the BIPM website. And the point they make in this book is that the use of a constant to define a unit disconnects the definition from the realization of the unit. This was a major change in philosophy for the International System of Units. Okay, let's look a bit at the history of the system of units. The centimeter gram system, centimeter gram second system comes from 1874. And it was developed by very well-known physicists, uh, William Thomson, Lord Kelvin, uh, James Clark Maxwell, and many other illustrious physicists working through the British Association for the Advancement of Science commonly referred to as the British Association. Following the tradition of Maxwell, this was an absolute system of units. What does it mean, absolute system? It means it is based on three fundamental mechanical units, length, mass, and time. Notice there is no electrical unit here. Wow, why centimeter gram second? Why not meter gram second? In fact, the meter gram second was recommended by the British Association in 1864, but by 1873, the British Association preferred the CGS system. Why? Because in the CGS system, the value of the density of water was almost exactly equal to one. That's the reason. Otherwise, we would have had MGS system. But one committee member, Stoney, thought the centimeter was far too small, and he wrote that the meter must, in the end, be accepted as the standard unit of length. This was the only objection to the adoption of the CGS system. But it was very clear because by reading the proceedings of the British Association, one reads that the intent was this, that one definite selection of three fundamental units would be made once for all, so there would be no subsequent necessity for amending it. Well, it was not to be. In 1901, Giovanni Giorgi, proposed something different. He proposed a four-dimensional system, the MKS system with X. What is X? X is an electrical unit. It could be any electrical unit. He was open to any possibility. Eventually, as you'll see in 1954, X was the ampere. This was a rationalized system. It means that the four pi is taken out of Maxwell's equations, following the tradition of Heaviside. And listen to what Georgie wrote. In my system, mu zero is not a numeric, nor do I assume any special value for it. It is a physical quantity having dimensions to be measured by experiment. This is what we have now in the SI system, and he invented this in 1901. You should be very proud of him. There are several standards organizations, international organizations. One important one is the International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC. 
Back in 1930, see, nobody was listening to Georgie yet. In 1930, the um, 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 unit for H is Orsted, and their ratio mu zero, they said, has a numerical value of unity. This, of course, is the CGS EMU system. And physical dimensions yet to be determined. They're not quite sure about the physical dimensions of mu zero in 1930. And this was based on the Maxwell idea that H is like a force and B is like a response to the force. Most physicists agreed that mu zero is, was actually dimensionless in the EMU system. But the IEC, had been hearing about the Georgie system. So they asked Georgie to explain MKS, explain his MKS system. And he wrote a monograph. And this monograph has been republished in IEEE Magnetics Letters. And what he did was he extended the classical definition of absolute system of units by noting the equivalence between a mechanical and an electrical energy. And he said, well, my four dimensional system, MKSX, is actually an absolute system. Everybody should love it. And he warned very clearly against fixing the value of mu zero. He said, the evil of the four pi and the irrationality of units would be perpetuated because the permeability of free space would receive the exact value of four pi times 10 to the negative seven instead of being the result of measurement. He was very much ahead of his time. There have always been problems with four pi and four and pi, and here are for Pi visiting the psychiatrist, uh, and Four is complaining that Pi is irrational, and goes on and on and on. So what the IEC recommended the adoption of the Georgie system, MKSX, with the fourth unit to be determined. Sounds like they are on the right path. However, they made a big mistake and they asked for advice from the International U uh, Union of Pure and Applied Physics and also the International Committee for Weights and Measures, CIPM. Remember, they threw mu zero under the bus. So what, did, what about IUPAP? IUPAP was heavily influenced by Richard Glazebrook. Richard Glazebrook was a former student of Maxwell. He was a strong supporter of the CGS system. He wanted MKS to be an absolute system based on the three fundamental mechanical units and directly convertible from CGS by powers of 10. And if you want to rationalize it, then you can also have a conversion factor of four pi. That's all he wanted and insisted. He acknowledged that, well, there is a practical MKS system that electricians use, but for physicists, what is important is the CGS system. Here's a picture of the Glazebrook, and he was working until the day he died, literally. literally. Uh, and a few days before he died in 1935, he wrote, uh, it is a little unfortunate that mu zero measures also the permeability, the ratio B over H in free space. And this has rather masked the fact that it is just a constant. It is simply a constant. And to people who are concerned with system of units, people who do not work in magnetics, mu zero still is just the magnetic constant. And that's what it is called, the magnetic constant. Well, then IEC had to make a decision and they threw Georgie under the bus. 1938, they recognized that the fourth unit could be any electrical unit. They recommend it as the connecting link between electrical and, mech and mechanical units, the permeability of free space. 
with this value 10 to the negative seven if unrationalized or four pi times 10 to the negative seven if in the rationalized system and no unit was specified for mu zero. So in effect, the ICEC recommendation was effectively the three-dimensional MKS system with mu zero just a scaling factor with respect to CGS. But meanwhile, what has been going on with CIPM at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures? 1939, the Consultative Committee on Electricity, we not yet magnetism, just electricity, recommended the absolute four-dimensional MKSA system. Then later in 1946, CIPM accepted that recommendation for the ampere, and they um, gave a, a definition and a unit and rationalization to mu zero. Finally, in 1954, the uh, General Congress of Weights and Measures approved the ampere as the base unit, and they formalized that way the MKSA system of practical units with no mention whatsoever of Georgie. In 1960, they adopted the official name Système International de Unité with the abbreviation SI for the practical system of units. And if that's the way it existed with minor modifications until 2019. The influence of IUPAP. When CGPM adopted the MKSX system in 1948, it said that IUPAP does not recommend that the CGS system be abandoned by physicists. Eventually, in 1987, they encouraged the adoption of, C of the SI system for data in physics journals, just data. And finally, they endorsed the full SI system in 2008. They were rather late. Remember, IUPAP was under the influence of the tradition of Glazebrook. So finally, I will give you my opinion of why the CGS system will become obsolete. And by CGS, for magneticians, I mean the EMU system. In both EMU and the former SI before 2019, mu0 had fixed values. Quantities were exactly convertible from EMU uh, by factors of 4 pi and powers of 10. But electromagnetic reality has changed with the revised SI. The quantities are no longer exactly convertible. Mu zero, as I described, is now measurable. The revised SI is ontologically different from EMU. On, by ontologically, I mean in terms of reality, by the nature of the, its reality, is different from EMU. And the peaceful coexistence of these two systems of units is no longer possible. The constitutive relationships is still the same, but if you try to do the conversion, here's an example for magnetic field H. If you try to convert Orsteds to amperes per meter, you can no longer use four pi times 10 to the negative seven for mu zero. You have to use the present value of mu zero, which will change every four years by just a little bit, just a little bit. What are the problems with the CGS EMU system? Well, those of you who work in EMU, um, I think recognize this. When there's really no named unit for magnetic moment, there's no named 
a good name for magnetic moment per unit volume. We say EMU for cubic centimeter, or we say four pi M in units of Gauss. So, it, so we, there's, there's confusion and uncertainty. And it turns out if you do the analysis in terms of base units, EMU per cubic centimeter, or and Gauss, they have exactly the same base units, but different values, different values by a factor of four pi. That's the difference. And if you work in the EMU system, you know it's a little bit difficult, maybe very difficult to check equations to see if there is dimensional balance in equations. Just as a very ex simple example, here is the magnetic dipole moment in terms of a current. And if you work in the SI system, you see ampere meters squared equals ampere meters squared. Simple. If you work in EMU, you have to think a little bit hard. Well, magnetic moment is in units of what's the unit? Maybe something called EMU, which is not a unit, but EMU is actually ergs per Gauss. Okay, we have ergs per Gauss on the left side, and on the right side, we have current centimeters squared, well, yeah, ab amperes, not amperes, ab amperes, because that is the unit of current in the EMU system. Not so easy, confusing for students. Advantages of the SI system, better communication with other workers in magnetism and better communication with workers in other fields. As I said, easy to verify dimensional balance. You can combine electrical units with the magnetic quantities without worrying about ab amperes. Demagnetizing factors, they have nice values, one third, one half. There's no more confusion about whether M is in Gauss or EMU per cubic centimeter. Magnetic moment M has real units, ampere meters squared, which is also joules per Tesla. So no more EMU, EMU is just the bird. My recommendations, journals should require SI and disallow EMU. Professors should use SI in their classroom instruction. Commercial instruments and magnetometers should be programmed to report results in SI. And just a final note. In introducing the rational four-dimensional System Georgie wrote in 1901, il sistema CGS lamentato dal cono. And not yet, but maybe he will be right eventually. So we have the modern SI system, ce n'est pas seulement une bonne idée, c'est la loi. And I leave you with some references. Uh, I think I can answer questions. And thank you very much for listening.